Hi, my name is Matt St. John. I'm one of the sales executives here at B Technologies. Uh, today, I'm going to quickly show you how to process an international order um, through Starship. I'm actually going to be using Sage 100. Okay, so let me just jump into my virtual machine here. Dead center of the screen, we have the Starship software. I'm also going to be using what we call our BOI or direct interface with Sage. Uh, so nice thing with this interface, I can actually just work right with inside a Starship as a shipper. I technically don't even need access to Sage. Uh, I know Sage has the shipping data entry module. Uh, so if you are currently using that, we do have what we call our Starship link interface. Um, so we can most certainly accommodate that if you would still like to use shipping data entry. But with BOI, as you can see here in the upper left-hand corner, I have my source document. Uh, for today's demo, I'm just going to use sales order, but in this drop-down, I can choose by sales order number, by customer number, or by invoice number. If my pick sheet or whatever I'm shipping against was barcoded, I can most certainly also just scan with a regular wedge type scanner that source information. We have a magnifying glass uh, right over here that I can look up all my sales orders. I can do batch processing if I'd like, uh, but I'm just gonna type in sales order number 222 here. So as soon as I type in that sales order number, uh, as you can see, Starship's gonna reach into Sage and return the order header and line item detail from that sales order. Right. We really just map fields from Sage to Starship back and forth. Um, map fields can have a one-to-many relationship. So as you can see here, the ship via has automatically selected the carrier service billing account information for me. So as a shipper, one less thing I have to worry about. Over here on the left-hand side, again, we have the sender. So that's the company that we are pulling the order from inside of Sage. We do support multiple companies as well as warehouses and locations. Recipient, that's just the ship to from the sales order. Now down in the packaging view, I'm gonna expand my items, but this is where I can get into doing item to box detail. Uh, before I get going, I just wanna make note, this item to box detail is not required. Um, so you could have just all your items live in one box and manually add as many boxes as you need. Um, one thing that's going on here, um, I'm going to start off with this top item in, in this large box. With Starship, you can actually set up or have Starship manually learn your, or I should say automatically learn packaging scenarios. So in this case, Starship knows, hey, I'm pulling this one item. Oh, I know that automatically always ships in a large box. So it's automatically popped. Uh, packaged it for me. The large box, I'm just going to click on that. That is actually part of our custom box database. Um, so with this database, you can set up uh, boxes, bags, bales, pallets, what have you. A uh, nice thing with using custom boxes is that it will automatically populate the dimensions for that package. Um, when we Starship does do rating, um, so it will also rate the dimension. So as you can see here, I have a weight of five, but the dim weight for this package is actually 21 pounds. Um, in my demo system here for the weight, I'm actually just pulling weights from item maintenance inside of Sage. You know, if you have a scale, an electronic scale, we integrate with most of them. Uh, we could set this up so it automatically just pulls the weight from that scale. On the line item detail, again, Starship's just looking at Sage, just pulling in the item detail information. But what it's also gonna start doing is manually storing your inventory items okay so we do this because you know have our own database because inside sage you know, they don't have a spot for like the nmfc code or freight class i know in a couple of the uh, i think 2017 and on they actually do have a spot for the commodity code now but with starship we actually store all that information for your international shipments as well so country manufacturer the harmonizer schedule b code um, we have our, our, our actual our only look, our own lookup excuse me, um, for that information. Okay. And all that's just going to be stored inside Starship. Once I generate this information, it's going to stay and be associated with each of the items. All right. um, back in the packaging view, uh, again, if I wanted to, you know, maybe I need to add a third box, I can simply click this plus box icon. We do have a repeat box function. So if this was a large order, maybe I needed 10 boxes, I can simply put here, hey, repeat the current package nine times for a total of 10 boxes. And then once I click OK, Starship would have all those 10 boxes listed. Um, 
with the item to box detail, you know, it's just simply dragging and dropping. So maybe this uh, blanket can go into this large box. I can simply drag and drop that. Uh, you can hold down the shift key if you want to do multiple item selections. Uh, you can also hold down the control key. Uh, so if you want to split quantities, you know, two in one box, two in the other, you can most certainly do that as well. Um, units on shipment. So if as a shipper I needed to back order anything, I can simply change the units on shipment here. Uh, with this BOI interface, Starship will automatically create an invoice inside of Sage. Uh, so anything I back order, Starship's going to back order the sales order as well as that invoice it automatically creates. Uh, next step, you know, now maybe I want to rate shop. Uh, so I'm going to simply click this rate shop icon or green dollar sign, or I can go to the rate shop tab, uh, up to my preferences. Uh, really quickly, uh, we also add this inside of sales order entry. Let me bring up sales order entry here. So as you can see, we add this little rate quote button. So at time of order, uh, my shipper can, or I'm sorry, my order taker can actually rate shop. Uh, so they can get a good ballpark figure of the rates. They can also do address validation. Um, Starship will, of course, do that when I bring in the order. We do validate zip plus four. Um, so we're gonna automatically correct the address for you and also correct the commercial residential flag. So we're gonna help save on those address correction fees and those commercial residential correction fees. So once I click the rate shop button, what Starship's gonna do? It's going to send out directly to the carriers that I have modules with. So in this case, as you can see, I have UPS and FedEx. Okay, It's sending them my account information and it's going to return my live negotiated contract rates that I have with the carrier. Okay, So there's no pricing tables. You know, if tomorrow UPS changed the fuel surcharge. Um, you know, as soon as they make that change, Starship's automatically going to pick that up and return that. We also have what we call ship via rules that you could set up. So actually, you know, I could have Starship automatically do this rating and then automatically select the carrier service based on my rules. So, hey, you know, Starship automatically select the least expensive um, carrier and or service for this shipment. You know, again, as a shipper, one less thing I don't have to worry about doing. On the charges tab, this is actually just a breakdown of charges. To ship a, an order, I don't have to click on this. I just show it so you can actually see our freight rules. Um, so with Starship, we can set up freight rules. Freight rules can be flat rates. It can be min maxes. It could be a percentage. Right? It could be based off your contract rate or the list rate. Um, the What I call triggers to trigger a rule, uh, they can go all the way down to line item detail. So maybe you ship some oversized items, you can create a rule that says, hey, anytime item one, two, three, four is on an order, automatically add $20 because it's an oversized item. Um, here I actually have one, I'm using a user defined field that I set up inside of Sage. It lives in customer maintenance. It's just a checkbox. So because it's selected, this customer is receiving a 10% discount on freight. Okay. But when I'm ready to ship and process, I can click the ship and process button or the F5 key, which is the shortcut key. All right. So I'm gonna click F5 or this shipping icon. And what Starship's gonna do is automatically process my shipment and then generate my shipping documents. Now for the sake of the demo here, I'm actually just gonna preview these documents. Um, but you know, of course we could set these up and they would print automatically for your shippers. Um, here is the what we call our smart label. So I'm also using this just for the sake of the demo. But as you can see, the smart label prints the shipping label and packaging list together on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So this would need to go to a laser printer. Uh, most certainly you can send shipping labels to a thermal printer. Uh, with Starship, our packing list, if you wanna use that, uh, you have the options that can go to a thermal printer as well. So maybe save some paper use the free labels you get from your carrier, or if you like, you can most certainly just send that right to paper, so it would go to a laser printer. Uh, options really up to you. Because this is an international shipment, I will also get my shipping do uh, international documents uh, if I need to print them. Uh, so here I have my commercial invoice. Again, Starship's pulling order header, line item detail. So all that information is going to automatically generate on the document. I can also then customize my documents. 
you know, as you can see here, I have it signed, dated. Again, as a shipper, one less thing I have to worry about stopping the shipping process to fill out. Okay. Um, with these templates, you can also assign printing rules. So maybe customer ABC needed this commercial invoice to look a little different. I could create a template for customer ABC, assign the rule, and then that way that commercial invoice for customer ABC would only print when the shipment is for customer ABC. Here's our NAFTA form. Again, order header, line item details automatically going to generate. And then I have this one filled out. It's signed. It's dated. It's got my name. It's ready to go. I just grab it off the printer and, and it's good to go. And if I want shipper's letter instruction, I also have turned on. So I can turn on, turn off any of these um, documents. But again, as a shipper, I'm just putting in my source document or scanning it, maybe doing some item to box detail, rate shopping, shipping process, get my shipping documents, and then I'm off to my next shipment. Okay. It's really a quick rundown. And of course, Starship has many other features. Um, and then quickly, I will just show you what happens for the front office. I'm just going to go into invoice data entry. So with this again, with this business object interface, Starship is automatically going to generate the invoice. Let me just select my batch here um, and select the invoice. So here's invoice number 222. This is the one we just shipped. So on the header tab, tracking button, there's my tracking information. We're writing this into Sage's tracking tables. So once someone updates and prints these invoices, um, this information will, it's going to stay. You know, it's not going to go anywhere. I can at a later time go through customer maintenance. I can go through invoice history lookup. You know, I can get this information. I can even use the Sage's buttons to track or even, you know, if I had a customer call, if I could tell them what was in each package. Okay. And on the totals tab, we are going to write back the freight amount. Okay, freight amount plus or minus any right, uh, any freight rules. Uh, we can also do write back rules. So, you know, if there's some scenarios where you do not want freight to be written back, we can most certainly accommodate that. Um, this freight cost from Starship underneath the freight amount, this is actually a user defined field that I set up. And uh, nice thing with Starship and that, that direct or business object interface is I can also push additional information into user defined fields. So here, this is actually, in this case, what UPS is going to charge me for this shipment. So that's my contract rate. So could set something up like this. That way, when someone's going through these invoices before they update them, you know, they can look and say, whoa, 148, we're going to be charged. We're charging them 133. What's going on? Oh, they got a freight discount. Yeah, they shouldn't have. It should be 155. You know, kind of last step, kind of um, so we can make sure we're not going to be losing money on shipment. And then, of course, I can just change that, click accept, and then move on to my next invoice that's been processed through Starship with that freight amount writing back. All right. So, again, really quick 30,000-foot overview on how to process an international shipment through Starship. Uh, most certainly, if you'd like, I would be more than happy to do a deeper dive demo uh, with you to kind of show you the, some of the more advanced features. I shouldn't even say advanced features. Just standard out of the box features. But again, I just wanted to do a quick video to show you how to process a shipment. There's my contact information. Again, any questions, please feel free to reach out. Give me a call, shoot me an email. Uh, thanks so much for taking time to watch this. Have a good one.